wherein the current generation is not carrying the baggage of the past. You say somebody may have done it. I don't agree with it. And I don't wish to relate to it in any way. What makes a nation a nation? Congress is trying desperately to say no, we can represent both interests. Muslim League says, sorry, not happening. Ambedkar is asking Congress to get real. Yes. Media is just one convenient punching bag. I significantly blame and squarely blame the left. The left never celebrated Dr. Kalam as long as he was alive. The left till date does not celebrate Sri K.K. Mohammed because he was clear about the position of Ram Bhumi. One of the finest human beings that I've had the good fortune of engaging with is Sri K.K. Mohammed. Hmm. Okay. And my regret is I could not interact with Sri Abdul Kalam. These are examples that I'm very comfortable with. And these are people who I genuinely feel warm towards. Okay. Sri K.K. Mohammed, notwithstanding his name, is among the few people who renovated temples. The Pateshwar Temple in Madhya Pradesh when he was with the ASI. And someone who was upfront and candid about the impact of Islamic invasions in Bharat. Okay. To my mind, that's honesty, wherein the current generation is not carrying the baggage of the past. You say somebody may have done it. I don't agree with it. And I don't wish to relate to it in any way. The problem is those who seek association with the conqueror of the past are making the conqueror an existing reality of the present. Okay. And that's where the problem starts. Okay. Then the wounds fester. So, so I have several disagreements again with Dr. Ambedkar, but one of the uh, finest things that he has said in Pakistan or partition of India, in the opening chapters, he is asking the basic question, what makes a nation a nation? He starts with the theoretical basis and then asks, whether India is two nations within one, can it survive as a single nation? Because he is writing this in 1946 when Pakistan has become a reality. Okay, so he is asking this question. Congress is trying desperately to say no, we can represent both interests. Muslim League says, sorry, not happening. Ambedkar is asking Congress to get real. And he says, you have never existed as a single nation, Hindus and Muslims. So please don't kid yourself. And he speaks in perhaps as politically incorrect a language as possible from today's terms or from today's perspective. And he's bloody clear about this. He says, what do you define as a nation is you have common heroes, common villains, which is in group ka definition be common hai, out group ka definition be common hai, who belongs to us and who doesn't. Both these definitions are crystal clear. And you have a largely shared vision of the future. But if you don't have a shared vision of the past, by future, right? Until 1920s, nobody thought that there would be a partition of Bharat. There was increasing clamor, but it's only after Khilafat it started really taking a lot. It, it started getting a lot of traction because the beast had been unleashed, which mm -hmm. was waiting for an opportunity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when all of this exists, I am asking myself, what part of this position, extreme or non-extreme, is different? Is a historic? or lacks basis in history okay. or in lived experience. Okay. That's one. Two, I'm 100% with you. Given the geopolitics, the increasingly volatile geopolitics of the world, where interestingly, Bharat is poised to play a good role, right? Why would you want to create trouble within? Well, I don't want to. I'm, I'm not interested in it at all. Anyone who is doing well for himself or herself, has zero interest in creating trouble because peace makes it all possible, hmm. right? It's not as if I need trouble for me to thrive. You're saying the media has fueled these Hindutva fear narratives, which Muslims and Christians and minorities have adopted. Therefore, there's a lack of peace. Media is just one convenient punching bag. I significantly blame and squarely blame the left. Okay, which is all the people you meet at parties, college kids. The academics, hmm. the Marxists, specifically the Marxists, yeah. their historiography and their ali alignment of interests has always been with the worst of examples from the non-Hindu communities, not with good examples. The left never celebrated Dr. Kalam as long as he was alive. The left till date does not celebrate Sri K.K. Mohammed because he was clear about the position of Ramjan Bhumi. Because as an ASI director, he knew what he was talking about. The evidence was, in, was speaking to him, right? So I have always said this. Remove the left from the conversation between the Hindus and Muslims. You'll have a much more honest conversation. 
okay because the left feels demonization or rather feeds demonization and the left also feeds victimization mm. it happens at both 